Okay, right on TV. You didn't even have to do any research and go online and read about it. It was on the national news. They've all come out and they've all stated that they're going to start raising all the prices on all the products. So what happens? If you haven't been preparing and if you don't start preparing now, then you're going to get left behind, folks. I hate to be point and blunt, but it's the truth. Because what is your plan? What is your game plan for all these food prices rising in 2021? It's all going to be taking place, folks. It's all over the news. Everything is coming around in full circle. Everything is going to come back and bite your pocketbook right in the rear end. It's going to take more money from you, even though that some places and businesses are already starting to increase the pay that they are paying their employees. But with this type of increase in basic food products and supplies of any type of any kind is just going to cancel everything out. You're still going to have people in poverty. You're still going to have people that can't prepare. You're still going to have people that have to make bad decisions. You're going to have to have people that have to decide between putting a roof over their head, food on their table, paying the electric bill, and gas in the car, and which one they're going to do. What happens to the, the little guy that is trying to work two jobs just to put food on the table, a roof over his head, and maybe some gas in his car so he can get back and forth to one of his two or three jobs that he's doing. Think about it. There are quite a few things that you can do. We'll start with number one. Coupons. Got to watch for those buy one, get ones. The BOGOs. That's where you're really going to maximize your money and your product that you're putting into your house, your food preps, and your storage. Okay. I would have to say that a lot of people out there that would love to start prepping will not have a chance to do it. But the simple fact is they're going to be basically priced out of being able to put in. Now, before we get going on this video, I want to make sure that everybody understands something. When you go shopping during your week, on your weekend or whatever else, and you see that your store is running a good sale on either frozen vegetables or canned vegetables, Maybe you don't have a lot of room in your freezers or you're running out of room on your shelves. Make sure that you still purchase those good deals because they're not going to be around forever. They've already talked about how prices are going to be going up and they're raising prices on a lot of goods from anything from diapers to Coca-Cola. So it's all been all over the news and everything in between. Okay, folks? So if you run across that great deal, make sure that you have a dehydrator. It is one of the best ways that you can do this. You can dehydrate any foods and this way here you can store them if you want in your mason jars or better yet, store them in Marlar bags with oxygen absorbers because this way here you're going to save a lot of room and a lot of space and you can just store those right in your closet, an empty box, a tote, whatever it may be. So this past shake those suckers really out. I think you guys have seen me do this enough. So you know what? Let's just do this really quick, huh? Watch this. Huh? Well, there's two trays. What do you think? Maybe we'll go for one more. Just remember, if you guys are out shopping and you run across some great deals or one of your grocery stores out there has a buy one, get one, you know, hey, you might want to try picking some up. I mean, because you want to keep preparing. You want to keep stocking up because prices are all on the rise. It's all over the news, folks. So do yourself a favor and get out there and start hitting some of the sales and stocking up. Buy yourself a dehydrator, dehydrate it down, get your Mylar bags and you can store that stuff anywhere. You can put it under the bed, the closet, in totes. You can do anything with it and it takes up little or no room. Welcome back to Survival Preparedness for Beginners. And that might just be you, right? So. Today's video is going to be on the top 10 canned goods that you need to prep for and make sure that you have a kind of a good stockpile of just in case of a natural disaster 
or emergency situation, loss of job, the list goes on and on and on because of the world that we live in. So you just need to be prepared is the whole key to this. So, without any more ado, let's get rolling. Number 10. You know we're not going to start with number one. Come on. Number 10. The good old dice tomatoes. Everybody likes corn, right? That would be number nine. Corn. Canned corn. We're sticking in the family of veggies. So number eight today is green beans. Number seven, the magical fruit. Baked beans. Now, you can do a lot of stuff with a can of up with your manual can opener. Don't forget that people. A manual can opener. If you don't have power, your electric can opener is useless. So, number six is tuna fish. Up with or no chili is your best bet because you can pop this little top. You don't even need a can opener. And you take this, pour it in your little pot, put it over your little stove of whatever kind it may be, and next thing you know, you have a meal. You can get it with beans, without beans. You can get it any way you want. They have all different types, flavors. You name it, they got it. Or milk chili. Number four. Now, we're going to get a little bit more uh, meat on your bones here. Okay? Now, number four would be roast beef. With me. Here we go. Please do. Now, chicken breast. Can chicken breast in your emergency supply food kit. Ta da! Everybody's favorite? It's BAM! It's the wonderful packed lunchy meat. Now, did everybody just like go, oh god, no? Yay! Hey, welcome back to Survival Preparedness for Beginners. And are we on the verge of a climate? shift. Are we on a verge of more mega disasters? It's happened before. It's only a matter of time before it happens again. Place. The unknown is what really gets you. The not being prepared is what kills you. Come on, folks. Writing's on the wall. The mega disasters are coming. They're only going to get worse. Now, if you had to pick one disaster from another, I would actually really pick a hurricane. The reason being, on that type of a mega disaster, you know it's coming well in advance. You usually have a good four or five day warning that it's headed your direction and how strong it might just be. It gives you plenty of time to get the hell out of Dodge. So Mother Nature is really trying to tell us something here, folks. Mother Nature is sending us warnings. Mother Nature is throwing up the smoke signals. And Mother Nature cannot be predicted. Yes, they have all these fancy computers nowadays and all the satellites up in the sky. But when it comes right down to it, Mother Nature is going to do what Mother Nature wants to do. Now, with these mega disasters and Mother Nature doing what Mother Nature does, is it time for you to be narrow heirs? Because that's what really is going to kill a lot of people, is the chaos. Chaos is not something that, as a prepper, you want to be part of. You want to avoid the chaos. You want to avoid being caught with your pants down, for say. So when this last cyber attack hit, were you one of the ones that were panicking because maybe you didn't think you had enough gas? Did you get in your car and run down and fill up? Did you take your gas cans with you that you use maybe for your lawn equipment and that type of stuff and top them all off? Why? panic buying. What makes that really a thing? Why do we do that? Why do we engage with the chaos? So, the chaos and all these different types of situations, we've all seen what has taken place. We all see what happens when something out of the ordinary happens, whether it be a natural disaster, whether it be a cyber attack, whether it be anything that comes out of the blue. And they're going to keep coming at us, folks. This is what I just want people to understand is this isn't just a one-time deal and it's over and done with. 
these things are going to continue. And the light bulb goes off and the next thing you know, you're one of those panic buyers. You're out there trying to get every last little crumb off the shelf that you can find and to survive. And it is. And the whole key to the situation is being prepared. Now people are panic buying. They were panic buying gas. Well, during the pandemic, we all saw what they did in the grocery stores. Everybody flocked to the stores, emptied them completely out. I mean, all the shelves, right? But they did it because their brain told them they had to. You see, our chemistry and everything else is prone to this whole panic type situation. When something happens, we can't control. And the next thing you know, you're second guessing yourself, wanting to know, do I have enough of this? Do I have enough of that? Do I have this supplies? Do I have this supplies? And as a prepper, that should be part of your prepping. See, you just don't prep just for your food, water, supplies, and everything else. You have to prep mentally to be able to deal with the situation when the situation arises and comes along. And this way here, you will be prepared. You will not be part of the chaos. So I'm survival preparedness for beginners. And I want everybody out there to thrive, to survive. And until next time, everybody just keep prepping, keep doing what you're doing, because we all can make it through any storm together. And we all can learn something from each other. So until then, I'll catch all of you on the flip side.